All right, I'm going to be doing a little more discussion on using a personal P computer power supply. I got this off of eBay, which is what motivated me to build mine that I saw in an earlier video. Zoom in a bit. It has screw terminals, it has fuses, it has a USB output, here's your power switch. All the LEDs light up, if you're missing a certain LED you've blown a fuse and so forth. One issue that is not discussed when you buy these, oh by the way, if you look here you can see that is an ATX1 supply, it doesn't uh, it leaves out the last four pins does the same thing on mine one issue I have with this the terminals that you use are not that great and another issue you must consider is this if you're using an ATX1 supply you have to connect a 10 ohm resistor across the 5 volts. Now I made this auxiliary piece here so I can keep my main terminals open. I salvaged this plug which goes right on the end of one of the floppy connections. If you don't have this resistor on an ATX1 it will not regulate proper, properly. And there you go. We'll look a little closer to this in the rest of the video and some alternate units that are available. All right, as stated earlier, here is my home built ATX power supply control adapter. In this case, I'm using an ATX1, as I explained before. You notice the pins are open on the end of the connector. Power switch still works, LEDs still work. The only difference is you have to connect a, as I mentioned, a 10 ohm load across the 5 volts to get it to work. Once again, I bought one of these, which prompted me to build mine because of several issues that I will point up briefly. Here we go. It's nice that it has a USB output. It has fuses. Here's your power switch. But what it lacks is the 5 volt standby is not connected, nor can I control it other than solder some jumpers onto the connector to control the power on and off externally. This is another view of that typical type board. This is widely available on eBay. Here it is connected to an ATX2 supply, fills the entire connector up. But in reality, the ATX2s, uh, from my measurements, don't require the external 10 ohm resistor across the 5 volts. Here's another variation that I have. Uh, it's a little bit simpler. Same connector and all of that. First, it has a connector so I can access and turn the power on and off remotely and it does bring the 5 volt standby out to the terminal block. Uh, this is a, this doesn't have, the, it, this is not as blown, this is a little simpler and cleaner than say this. As another view, here's your 3 volts ground, 5 volt standby ground, plus 5, minus 12, plus 12 if and it still works on an ATX1 but you still have to connect that 10 ohm resistor across the 5 volts somewhere. Here's another variation of this. Here's this little switch to turn it on and off. No 5 volt standby connections and no external access to the switch other than soldering some wires underneath the board perhaps. I have seen these particular little switches used in other 
low-end stuff you get off of eBay and about every case they failed and I had to wire an external replacement switch so just be aware of that I don't own this but eh, it's rather clean and rather straightforward and that's that so this ends another look at these PC power supply breakout cables this is your host Lewis Laughlin Thanks for listening.